Hey everyone, welcome to this edition of During the Shoot. My name is Alec Johnson. Thanks so much for joining me. In this episode, I'm going to talk about making those beautiful Star Trail photographs we've all seen. I want to open with a uh, quick vignette of a Star Trail shot I produced in the Quetico Provincial Park a few years ago. Uh, this shot was taken about midnight. It was approximately 45 minutes in length. And there are four things happening here I want to discuss. First is camera position and uh, in so much as the direction it's facing. Here I'm shooting straight to the north, right into our north star, Polaris. And that produces the concentric circular star trails we see here. If we shoot to the north, our center of rotation will be above the horizon. If we shoot to the south, we'll get a very similar pattern, but this center of rotation will move just below the horizon. The second thing I want to show uh, here is that you need to have your composition set prior to it getting dark. Uh, otherwise, you cannot see through the viewfinder and it will be very difficult to get the composition you would like to be working with. The third thing I want to talk about is during these exposures, it's really fun to paint with light. And in this case, uh, in the 45 minute exposure, I laid underneath the canoe with a small LED headlamp for about 15 minutes and just painted back and forth. And then the fourth thing I think is worth uh, talking about here is the choice of lens. I shot this with a 16 millimeter a super wide angle lens, effective focal length, and that gives us the ability to uh, capture a great deal of sky and a great deal of foreground in a single frame, which works really well for the star trail shots. I want to back up and talk for a few moments about scouting in daylight. This is so ultimately critical to having a successful shot. And considering the investment in getting a single frame, it's worth uh, spending a few minutes discussing. This is an image I shot this summer on the north shore of Lake Superior uh, and it was one where I did not scout and I really wish I would have. Um, I did not get my tent. This is a tent out here. I did not get that tent set up in time. I got out here very late right near sunset. I had to set this tent up. Had to run back over here and it's now dark uh, and try to compose in the image. Then run back uh, check on my light, my lantern, kind of think about how I wanted to do that, then run back and, and hopefully get the shot. Um, and what ended up happening was uh, a composition, one, that I did not like, two, uh, management of my light, which didn't work, and three, uh, a star trail pattern, which I was not happy about, and I didn't take time to actually look at the direction in the sky I was shooting. Um, this star trail pattern, it's not good or bad or right or wrong. It just wasn't working with the design of what I had in mind for the image. Uh, but this is a pattern you get when you shoot east or west. Uh, by comparison, um, whoops, by comparison, we had this shot where we shot to the north. Uh, and here we're shooting uh, in a westerly direction. So when you shoot either east or west, you end up with that kind of flat in the middle and curves out on the ends or in the corners of the shot. So please, please get out and scout ahead of time. Here's a quick rundown of the equipment I think you ought to be working with that, that's essential. First is a camera, a digital camera, that offers the bulb exposure mode. Most standard exposure modes uh, in, in digital cameras will limit you to a 30 second exposure. So to get into the 20 to 30 minute or longer exposure, you need a bulb exposure mode. Uh, tripod kind of goes without saying. Uh, definitely get yourself a cable release. That way you can lock the shutter open during the bulb exposure mode and have a fully charged battery. Uh, these shots, for reasons I'll uh, talk about in a moment, are very, very battery intensive. You would also uh, ideally like to be using a compass, definitely during the scouting so that you know the direction you're shooting. Uh, stopwatch, either uh, on a wristwatch or in your cell phone are great. Most cameras that allow bulb mode, bulb mode also include a timer, but I do not like to be near the camera during the exposure, so I rely on a separate stopwatch. And also a pocket flashlight uh, or two, um, one to navigate where you're walking and two in case you want to paint with light a, a nine volt lantern a nine volt battery lantern is also great uh, let me talk a little bit now about the process 
The first step is to, as I've already mentioned, establish location and props in daylight and get that all scouted out ahead of time. Then we go on to step two, which is conducting our test shots. We do this at a very high ISO, uh, 1600, to uh, minimize the amount of time and battery we use up to conduct our test exposures. I like to start at f4. Some people start at f2.8 um, just because that's where they think they're going to shoot and there are good reasons for doing that. Uh, I like to give myself a degree of freedom at f4. Uh, most importantly, shut off your in-camera noise reduction. If you don't, uh, anytime you go over 30 seconds of exposure, the camera is going to process for an additional amount equal to that exposure. If you do a three minute test exposure, you're gonna have three minutes of noise reduction, six minutes of com uh, camera processing time, eating up your battery. Make sure during the test you shut off in-camera noise reduction. Step three, you wanna calculate your final shot duration. This means, uh, for example, if it, during your test, you produce a one minute uh, exposure that works for you, that test was at 1600 ISO F4. If I wanna do a final shot at ISO 100, I need to multiply my test exposure by 16. So to go from ISO 1600 to an exposure equivalent at ISO 100, I need to multiply that exposure time by 16. This is an approximation. Let me say why in just a moment. In step four, we then set our camera to the desired ISO, turn back on the in-camera noise reduction. These long, long exposures uh, have a lot of what's called long exposure noise. Uh, really messes up a file unless you use your camera's in-camera noise reduction to clean it up. You uh, already should be in bulb mode, exposure mode. You have your stopwatch ready. Now, like I said, uh, let's say your, your calculated correct exposure time is 20 minutes. Uh, what will happen is during uh, long exposures like this at night, uh, there's going to be some loss of light during the exposure. Things are going to continue to get a little bit darker. So uh, I always definitely, as a rule of thumb, add back in about uh, 1.5 times the amount of of time I need for an exposure. So if I calculate a correct exposure of 20 minutes, I'm thinking at least 30, maybe two times that, maybe 40 minutes, depending on what part of the country and what part of the year you're in. Uh, in the middle of summer, twilight hangs around a lot longer and there's more loss of light during your exposure. If you're in the early spring or late fall, uh, things get dark really fast. And if you go out at seven or eight o'clock at night, the exposure uh, is going to stay pretty consistent. All right, that's it for this episode of Star Trails. Go on out and start making some really fun and radical images. Thanks so much.